Hey, 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 what's happening, everybody? How you doing? This is E. Wright Jones coming to you with Get Unstuck and Sexy with E. Wright Jones. Welcome to the show. The show is being brought to you by Keep Looking Up with B. Wright Jones, LLC. And I'm so glad that you're here with us on this Thursday afternoon. If you would like to connect with me, you can do so. Facebook at B. Wright Jones. Instagram, Keep Looking Up 7. Twitter, Keep Looking Up with two Ps. And my website is brightjones.com. The show has been, is actually a replay from Power Conference 2022 that took place in January. I'm going to be sharing each week and highlighting the speakers from the conference. So enjoy, be enlightened, be encouraged, and remember always to keep looking up. Be blessed. Hello, and again, welcome to Power Conference 2022. I am so glad that you are here. I am Belinda, and I am the visionary for Power Conference 2022, and I have a message for you on today. My message for you is there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in that name of Jesus. Jesus. So again, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here and I'm so glad that God appointed this moment and this time for you to be here, for you to hear these messages of hope and faith so that you step out in in your purpose with power and authority. Praise God. So just remember to keep looking up. Remember to keep trusting in him because God is guiding you. He is with you and he loves you. Amen. So let's talk about that name of Jesus. There is power in that name. I think about life and I think about the different challenges that we go through, the different things that we face in life. But there is one thing that I know for sure that when you call on the name of Jesus, when you stand and you believe that he will come through, he will pick us up out of despair and darkness. When we call on that name of Jesus, he will deliver us out of stuff that we thought was good for us because we thought we knew what was best, right? But even in our own mess, in our own poor choices, Jesus, he'll pick us up. He'll save us. He'll give us favor, even when we don't deserve it. He's a good God like that. He's good like that. But let me tell you about that name of Jesus. I think about some scriptures that I was looking over about the name of Jesus. And it said here, for this reason, and this is Philippians, coming from Philippians chapter two. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Are you still unsure? Because I have more. Luke chapter 10, verse 17, the 72 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. The demons are subject to him. Satan can't touch us. Demons can't touch us. They have to get the approval from God. They have to go to God, just like with Job. God asked him, 
Ask the devil, are you considering Job? Got to get permission. That's power. There's power in the name of Jesus. Acts 4.12. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And lastly, Romans 10, 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God is good. God is so good. I think about my life and I think about the different choices and things that I've made in life that weren't the best for me. I think about years ago, God placed a scripture on my heart and I knew that it was God speaking to me, telling me in Romans 12 to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of my mind that I may prove what is the good, acceptable and perfect will of God. God was telling me back, and I remember this was back in the 90s, the early 90s, God got my attention with that scripture. And even though I didn't understand everything then, I knew that God was with me, and I knew that God was trying to tell me to not conform to the way of the world. Don't believe the hype, basically. Don't believe the way of the world is the best way but to follow him, to follow after him, to stay connected to the vine, to believe and to know that there is life in Jesus. Who would, who do you choose to serve today? That's the, that's the question. You know, I want to stay connected to the vine. I want to stay connected to life. I want to believe and know that God has a good plan and a purpose for my life. Jeremiah 29, 11, that doesn't bring harm but he has a good plan for me. And I believe that I'm walking in it. I think about, you know, again, some of the choices that I made because I wanted to be in control because, you know, I, I conformed to the world and, and, and thought, you know, listen to other people. When are you getting married? When, you know, you, you're not getting no younger. What are you waiting on? And allowing pressures from people and your peers and things to, to push you into making decisions that aren't always the best. But because we want to be in control, because we want to keep up with the Joneses, we tend to do things that are not always God's best for us. But because he is so good, when we call on his name, he is so faithful to get us out of the very mess that we chose to get ourselves into. I think about when I got married. Um, I This was my first time getting married um, at the age of 44. And I was married for about nine years. And, you know, the funny thing about it is that I had a prayer list and I knew what I prayed for and I knew what I wanted, but I allowed myself to settle instead of waiting for God's best. And because I decided to take matters into my own hands and decided to get married, when I saw the red flags, that God kept showing me, but I wanted to do it my way, that actually my marriage ended in divorce. But I think about it, you know, I look at my life now, my divorce was final last August, actually the same month that we were married. Last August of, I'm sorry, last August of 2020, I'm sorry that my marriage ended and uh, let's see that was August five months later yeah five months later January God began to do some things in my life that I couldn't do on my own 
sometimes we have to realize that we can lose ourselves when we place ourselves in situations thinking that certain things will define us. In my mind, it was made up that being married would define me. But God reminded me, no, it's in me. It's in me where you're defined. It's in me. We get lost sometimes in things we get lost in wanting certain things so that we can look a certain part. But Jesus is saying, no, call on me. I'm the one. I'm the one that's going to make a difference in your life. Make me first in your life. And then I'll give you the desires of your heart. We have to release control and stop trying to make things happen. Trust that God knows what's best for us. And allow him to do the work. I think about those years in my younger days when I wanted to party and I wanted to do some recreational drugs and wanted to hang with, you know, people that I thought were pretty cool and things like that and wanted to hang out. And I thought about that life. And if I would have stayed in that life, the downward spiral, because I was headed, I was headed. I was headed there because it went from marijuana to snorting cocaine to trying some mushrooms and some other things, other drugs and stuff. And if I would have stayed in that path, it would not have been good. But because I called on that name of Jesus, he took all that stuff, took all that stuff away. I think about how I was a, a cigarette smoker and I just, I loved my cigarettes. At the time, I just thought they were so relaxing. You know, I'd be puffing my cigarettes and I heard the Holy Spirit say, let them go, let them go. And I, I didn't want to do it, but I knew God was speaking. I knew it. And I'm telling you, I called on that name of Jesus, took him away. I haven't had a cigarette in maybe over six, maybe seven years. That's the power, the power that's in the name of Jesus. We can do anything through Christ. We have to remember that because I'm telling you, in that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. In that name, there is salvation. In that name of Jesus, there is healing. In that name of Jesus, there is hope. In that name of Jesus, there are blessings. Who are you calling on today? What name are you calling on? I'm calling on Jesus because he's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He's the only one that can save. He's the only one that can deliver. He's the only one that can heal. Yes, we have doctors, we have lawyers, we have people in place. Yes, but it's because of the power, the power in that name, that they have the ability to do what God has called them to do, but don't get it mistaken. It's only by that name of Jesus. Jesus is the one, when you're down to your last, that you can call on him. I tell you, I look at my life, and I didn't think I was going to make it after my marriage. My husband worked two jobs and I was worried about finances and different things. But I'm going to tell you one thing. God is a sustainer. He will keep you. He will keep you. And I'm telling you, I know that for a fact. I haven't lost a car. I haven't. I have. I've been paid every bill on time. He's a keeper. 
And I know one thing, I'm faithful with my tithes. I believe in tithing. Even when I didn't have much, I paid my tithes. And I'm telling you, he's a keeper. He's been keeping me. So, beloved, I want to say to you today, I don't know what you're going through. But if you'll trust and you'll just call on that name of Jesus. He could be everything that you need and you desire. If you'll just release control and trust in that name. Trust in that marvelous name. Trust in that name that has all power and authority. But see, as believers, as believers, he's given us also power and authority to call those things that be not as though they were. He's given us power and authority to speak to that sickness. He's given us power and authority to speak to those finances, to speak to our bank accounts. Money cometh to me in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be in lack, in desperation. What are you saying out of your mouth today? Who are you calling on? When you're going through a situation, are you picking up the phone and you're calling your friends? Well, many of them are probably in the same situations like you are. I encourage you to call on that name of Jesus. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Call on that name of Jesus today. Let him lead and guide you into that perfect plan he has for your life. It's in that name of Jesus that there is life everlasting. Beloved, today I say that there is peace in that name. There is joy in that name of Jesus. There is favor in that name. Everything that we need, just call on the name of Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. Begin to speak life over yourself, over your situations. Pray and believe and know that God's got it. Where is your faith at today? I encourage you to put your faith in that name of Jesus that will not fail you, that will not forsake you, but has that plan for you and that purpose for you in the palms of his hands. So beloved, be encouraged today, knowing that there is power in that name of Jesus. He can turn your life around just like he did for me. One year, August of, of 2020, I was getting divorced. Next year in January, I became a global speaker. Been speaking on different platforms. I'm a published author. You know, I, I, I'm an online certified life coach, helping other women to walk in their purpose with confidence, with clarity and power. God has did something with my life that's wonderful and I'm so grateful and I just can't hold it. So just call on that name of Jesus. Let him take control of every situation. Let him take control of that addiction. Let him take control of those, those that depression. Call on his name in that lack. Call on his name in that fear. Call on his name in those broken relationships. Call on him and trust him today. I hope that this message has encouraged you. If you would like to connect with me, you can do so on several different platforms. Uh, my website is B Right Jones. That's B W R I G H T Jones.com. You can connect with me on Facebook under B Right Jones. You can also connect with me on uh, Instagram at keep looking up and the number seven and on Twitter, keep looking up with two P's. 
Be blessed, beloved. Know that God loves you, that he has a good plan for your life, that you don't have to stay in fear or bondage. You don't have to stay in lack. You don't have to stay walking uh, in sickness. But call on that name of Jesus and let him change your life. Be blessed, beloved. Continue to enjoy the conference. Take care.